Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 12 of season 2 NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I am Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Subway Fresh Fit 400 here at Phoenix International Raceway. We're getting set for 42 laps of racing here at this one mile racetrack. <coughs> and before we look at the starting lineup, let's look and see how the point standings look coming into the race today. So, after last week at uh, Kansas, Rafael LaDuc leads the points by 24 points over Anthony McCrory. Then it's Chris Michaels, Emmanuel Hardnett, Charles Sanford, the top five. Then the rest of the top ten is Nelson Thornhill, Grayson Acevedo, JT Bryant, Dorian Facepuncher, and Trent Dunham. Rest of the top 20, on the other hand, is Seth Cole, Joshua Sakuli, James Qualls, Kev Shear, Nathaniel Reed, Austin LaPlante, DJ Curtis, Mark Lane, Dylan Thoreau, and Matt McIntyre. So that is how the top 20 in the points look going into this race. And keep in mind, after this race, we have All-Star break coming up for Dragonette. So that's going to be quite exciting when we get there. But anyways, here's a look at the starting lineup. In the last row, we have Paul Minnick and JT Bryant. Starting in the top 10, Nelson Thornhill with a third pole this season, with Dorian Facepuncher starting right next to him. Row 2 is DJ Curtis and Benjamin Miles. Row 3 is James Qualls, Matt McIntyre. Row 4, Grayson Acevedo, Chris Michaels. And then row 5, Anthony McCreary and Emmanuel Hartnett. So with that said, let's get the command to fire engines for the Subway Fresh Fit 400 at Phoenix. And there you have it. A weird gentleman start your engines, may I add. But all 42 cars rolling out on track for their pace lap. Now, two big things I've noticed with this racetrack is uh, pit strategy may be a factor, but also the high line, if you run off the corner off the high line, you're going to be able to carry more speed and get a bigger run up off the corner. Even though you can attempt the low line, it does seem like the high line is the preferred line on the racetrack. So we shall see how that's going to come into play here in this race. And I saw in the lineup, points leader Rafael LaDuke is starting in 20th in this race. We shall see how all that is going to go down as here we go. Boogity, 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 let's go racing. Well, Nelson Thornhill leads the first lap of the day here at uh, Phoenix, as meanwhile a battle for second was starting to ensue between Dorian Facepuncher and DJ Curtis, but it's like I said, that high line just gets such a big run up off the corner, and we may see that from Benjamin Miles in the 20, as he's going to go by DJ Curtis for third. But DJ Curtis isn't going to give up. It does seem like off of 1 and 2, the bottom lane kicks in. But off of 3 and 4, it's the high lane that kicks in. So it's all depending on what line you're going to attempt to run off the corners, entering the corners, and seeing if you can make it stick. Let's watch the 14 of DJ Curtis trying to work underneath the 17 of Chris Michaels. That time the high line prevailed. So Michaels is able to pull away big time from the 14. But now a battle going on for third. Benjamin Miles up high. Chris Michaels down low. But that high lane is going to get the bigger run. And Benjamin Miles is going to keep the spot for himself. 
As meanwhile, Emmanuel Hardnett trying to get underneath the 17, but not having such luck. But the 17's right back on the back bumper of the 21. Back up here at the front, Nelson Thornhill still leads by a little over two tenths of a second over Dorian Facepuncher. As we are going to look around to see how the rest of the field is running. Right now, battle going on between Kev Shearer and Paul Minnick for position in the very back of the field. As I am going to take a look to see where points leader is running, Rafael Duke. There he is running up high, last scored in 18th, so already here in the early goings trying to make up ground on the uh, racetrack. As it's starting to get single file up here in the top seven or so, DJ Curtis still trying to run the bottom, but it's just not working. It's almost like as if whenever you run the bottom of this racetrack, you have to let off so much more than the cars up high where the cars up high could just get that bigger run as we're about to see from the 55 of Grayson Ace Vettos. There you saw it, and Anthony McCurry's actually going to go by, and perhaps even Zachary Fitzwater in the 91's going to go by to 14 of Curtis. Thornhill still hanging on to that top spot on track, as meanwhile, Michaels and Miles are still going at it for third, but Miles again utilizing the higher line to get the run and pull away from the 17 for the time being as Hardnett's right on the back bumper of the 17. <clears throat> Still curious to see what's going to happen up here with these three cars. And then you got Matt McIntyre in the 24 Sun Energy 1 car trying to lurk in there as well. Anthony McCrory who started... Uh, around the top 10, still in the top 10. Now he's got the 55 to his inside, but again, that high lane going to get the bigger run. And now the 24 and the 20 are battling for position, and it looked like the 24 moved up high to get this run. Let's see what happens between him and the 20. He's going to get the run and also even get the run to go by Chris Michaels for fourth off of turn two, we might see it, unless the 17 really has something. Oh, and he dove it in a little harder, so he is hanging in there for now. Trying to hang in strong to kick the... Try to get the low line to go. But let's look at the speed difference between the low line and the high line. Al almost 5 to 10 miles per hour difference between the high side and the low side. As we're about to see it again with the 17, it's 3 wide for 3rd. Matt McIntyre looking low underneath the 21. Let's see how the 24 will do on the bottom. And... Again, that high side gets that big run up off the corner as we're looking in helicopter view as we also see the lead still is to Nelson Thornhill. Yeah, like I said, off of turn two, you can maintain... A position off the bottom is just here in three and four is where it's tricky for the guys running low as the high line as there you see it right there kicks in the high gear are right up off the corner as we stay on helicopter view to watch the difference between the low, low side and the high side right there the low line got a bigger advantage has a half a car length let's see how it looks now in three and four Man, if the 24 can get clear of the 21, he could beat him. And, whoa, the 21 had a big run, but maybe the 24 will clear him here in 1 and 2. I don't know, the 21's got a big run, and now the 24 clears the 21. So, you can make the low line work, it's just all about how you're driving that lane to get it to work. And it did work well for the 24 in the end, now up to 3rd. As meanwhile, cars are getting bunched up here in the top five or so. Chris Michaels on the bottom with, with um, uh, Zachary Fitzwater. Fitzwater also was thinking about making it three wide in the middle, but decided against it. Probably a smarter decision on his part, but now he's going to do it three wide because Hardnett was coming down low. We're seeing some good battles going on towards the front, just not up at the front. 
as it's still been the top two has been the same since the very start of the race. Thornhill and Face Puncher have been dominating the top two all day. Meanwhile, in the back, Paul Minnick is the one running in dead last right now as I'm trying to look to see where Rafael LaDuke is running the points leader. There he is. He was last scored in 14th. So, decent day going for the, for the 99 of Rafael LaDuke. Trying to get some good finishes, but he's got quite a few cars who are in the top five in points. Up ahead of him, those being McCreary, Hartnett, and Michaels. The highest of them is Michaels running fourth. So, and also it's one point per position. So right now, Chris Michaels would gain ten points on his teammate, Rafael LaDuke. But now as we look around, Matt McIntyre may have a run on the 62 of Dorian Face Punchers. Here he comes trying to use the bottom. But again, just can't get it to quite work out as Chris Michaels thinking about making a move on the inside in 1 and 2. But just not enough speed going in there to make that move work. As it's now a big gap separating 4th and 5th. As 5th right now is Zachary Fitzwater. And now Benjamin Miles has got Anthony McCurry on his inside. Let's see how this will work. Miles again getting that run up off the corner. And uh, not quite clear yet of the 61. The 61 drove it in deeper. And he's somehow making it work even though 21's got the tiny advantage. Let's see what happens here in 1 and or in 3 and 4 and see how this goes. 61 drove it in a little harder that time, but again, that speed, the speed differential of the low side and high side kicks in, but the 61 isn't giving up. Still got the run on the inside in 1 and 2 on the 21. And now Matt Haas is in this picture as well, <clears throat> trying to run the high side as well. Both the 21 and the 77 got the run off the corner. But now the 61 still there. He's hanging in tough on the bottom, though. It's like there, 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 there does seem to be a few people who know how to run the bottom and make it stick. It's just a matter of how they're handling it in the corners. As McCreary nearly got in front... Of the 21 in time to get him clear, but let's see what happens off of two. If he can get clear of him, and he does get clear of the 21. So, that's another example of somehow, it, it takes several laps to get it to really kick in right, but you can make the bottom work. It's just all a matter of patience. Back up, at, up here at the front, nearly a three-car fight for second. Face Puncher, McIntyre, and Michaels... As a little bit up ahead is the 78 of Thornhill, who Thornhill now gets the most laps led bonus points. Because he's led well over half the race since the drop of the green flag. Is now here comes the 24 underneath of the 62 for a run. But again, that high line makes the difference. And in a way, whenever they try and battle the 62... It kind of does help the 62 to gain a little bit of time on the 78 of Thornhill for the lead. But who knows if that's going to go well. Well, and now green flag pit stops are happening. First car to pull out is the 24 of Matt McIntyre. Benjamin Miles is also coming in. So this is going to be interesting. Who can get the lead off of pit road? And the 24 of Matt McIntyre and the 21 of Benjamin Miles were the first two to come in. And I see up ahead, or behind, more cars coming in, including the leader, Nelson Thornhill. So he sacrifices the lead for Chris Michaels to stay out and lead a lap. <clears throat> it's all about a matter of how fast you get out of pit road and how much time you gain or lose on track as a result. And I hear the 17 slowing down, so that will mean he's going to come in the pit road now at this point. And now the 17 of Chris Michaels has entered pit road. One car staying out, or several cars staying out again, 
Joshua Collard staying out. As meanwhile, I'm trying to get to the bow off pit road in the second group, and Nelson Thornhill gets out ahead, well ahead of the 62, a face puncher, but it all is all about who can win it all after the fact. As I'm trying to find, there's the 17 of Chris Michaels. Two tires and gas, same with quite a few other cars. Chris Dollarton going four tires. But again, it's all about how fast you get off a of pit road and how much time you gain or lose after the fact. And Chris... Oh, and I heard uh, some contact. Johnny Gardner gets into Dylan Thoreau on pit road. That's the closest to a wreck we've had all day, and I think we might get a new leader as a result, as if I'm trying to find him right now out on the track, as everybody's still trying to cycle back around properly. But I think we're going to have a new leader, and that's going to be the 17 of Chris Michaels. Yeah, Chris Michaels has officially cycled around as your race leader, after those pit stops so that really shook up a lot of things so some strategy kicked in and the 17 now leads the race by a huge gap over second place and actually let's look and see how the field looks after those pit stops excuse me so it's 11 to go chris michaels is your leader second is anthony mccrory third is emmanuel hartnett fourth dj curtis fifth seth cole sixth matt mcintyre 7th is Nelson Thornhill, 8th Dorian Face Puncher, battle for 9th between Zachary Fitzwater and Preston Lord, 11th Joshua Collar, 12th Andrew Rich, 13th Matt Haas, 14th Benjamin Miles, 15th Jonathan Zorling, 16th Nathaniel Reed, 17th Grayson Ace Veto, 18th Dylan Poteet, 19th Trent Dunham, 20th Austin LaPlante, 21st Sean Galligan, 22nd Jessica Sheldon, 23rd Rafael LaDuke, 24th, James Shelley, 25th, James Qualls, 26th, Paul Minnick, 27th, Angel Alvera, 28th, David Rivera, 29th is Joshua Sakuli, 30th, Dylan Young, 31st, Chris Dollarton, 32nd, Dougie Shears, 33rd, Dylan Thoreau, 34th, Mark Lane, 35th, Oscar Anderson, 36th, Charles Sanford, 37th, PJ Williams, 38th is Kyle Matthews, 39th, Kev Shearer, 40th, JT Bryant, 41st Jesse King, and then dead last is Johnny Gardner. But back up here at the front, Chris Michaels leads the way by nearly three seconds. Three seconds over Anthony McCurry, so yeah, it was all about how fast they could get out of pit road and what strategy they were going for. As meanwhile, we got a battle going on for six between three cars. Face Puncher, Seth Cole, and Nelson Thornhill. And Face Puncher has the spot for now, but Seth Cole got that run up off the higher groove, and now here he comes, and they're approaching Hartnett and McIntyre for position as well, and DJ Curtis. So this could all turn into a big fight for third place, if possible. And Anthony McCurry's kind of up there since he's starting to lose a little ground to the 14 of Curtis and everybody else behind him. <clears throat> Dorian Face Puncher trying to work the bottom underneath the 24. And should get a run up off turn two. But let's see how it looks off of turn four. And also DJ Curtis is in there too as Face Puncher drove it in really deep. as we are less than five laps to go in this race. And look at this, three wide, oh, near contact. Three wide for the uh, sixth position between Seth Cole, Nelson Thornhill, and Emmanuel Hardnett, as they are still three wide, Seth Cole in the middle of all this. And whoa, Seth Cole got tied up off the corner, nearly got into the 20. But the 78 does clear to 98 for a position right now. So right now he has the 7th spot. But let's see what Hardneck can do up, up off the high line. 
Not really much on Thornhill, but may have a run on Seth Cole. <clears throat> and now McCurry has been caught, so now this has become a big battle for second with less than three laps to go. As meanwhile, back up in the front, Chris Michaels has the lead, coming off a of turn four to take two to go here at Phoenix. After excellent pitch strategy on the 17, he waited until the second to last group of cars to go into pit road, and it worked out well for him as he's got a monumental lead over second place, which is under under or uh, for grabs between the 62 and the 61. But coming off of four, white flag is out for Chris Michaels as I'm trying to look at the second place fight, and face puncher clears McCreary. But McCreary fighting back on the bottom, but the 62 is going to have the advantage, so face puncher up to second. As battles continue to rage on, but the only thing that matters is up here at the front, coming out of turn number four, first win this season, Chris Michaels goes in the All-Star break with a win. He wins the Subway Fresh Fit 400 at Phoenix, and he just locked himself into the All-Star race for this season and next season. So great job for the 17 team. Huge points day, too, so he could really close the gap on his teammate for the uh, points lead. But a great performance by the 17. Managed to make pitch strategy work at the end to beat out everyone and pull ahead. Well, let's look at the rest of the results. Second place starter Dorian Facepuncher is going to get second place. So great points day for him. And I tell you another guy who had an excellent points day. Anthony McCurry in third. Came in 24 points behind Le Rafael LaDuke. We'll see in comparison here in just a little bit, but he comes out third. Zachary Fitzwater with a solid run in fourth, the highest finishing rookie. And then DJ Curtis with a great run in fifth, great run in sixth for Matt McIntyre. The dominant car of the day, Nelson Thornhill, comes up short again, comes out seventh. Emmanuel Hardnett with a great run in eighth. Uh, Seth Cole with a solid run in ninth. And a great top ten finish for Preston Bloor, and that may put him back up into the top 30 in points. Rest of the top 20 was Matt Haas, uh, Benjamin Miles, Grayson Acevedo, Joshua Collard, Sean Galligan, Andrew Rich, Nathaniel Reed, Trent Dunham, James Qualls, and Rafael LaDuke. Rest of the top 30 was Jonathan Zorlin, James Shelley, Austin LaPlante, Dylan Young, Dylan Poteet, Chris Dollerton, David Rivera, Mark Lane, Jessica Sheldon, and Joshua Sakuli. Rest of the top 40 was... Dylan Thoreau, Charles Sanford, Paul Minnick, Oscar Anderson, Angel Alvera, P.J. Williams, Kyle Matthews, Dougie Shears, uh, Kev Shear, and J.T. Bryant. Then the final two cars that finished were Jesse King and Johnny Gardner. So that does it for our coverage here at Phoenix, and we take a week, we take a week break, a one-week break from points racing as we are getting set for All-Star break, All-Star Open with everybody that didn't make the all-star race and then the all-star race itself should be exciting when we get to dragonette but until then here are your results rookie points and regular points going into all-star break this is levi mcintyre signing off